Hey man cave, this is Bob from Bob's Inscale Man Cave and today we're installing a sound decoder in a Kato locomotive. Uh, the sound decoder is from Soundtracks, a TSU KN1 sound decoder and it comes with uh, the decoder and the small little speaker so I don't have to mill the frame to get it inside this Santa Fe Gold Bonnet PA1. So let's get started right now. What you'll need is the decoder, your locomotive, some solder, some solder flux paste, some uh, CA glue or some modeling glue, a couple toothpicks, a soldering iron of course, a wet sponge to clean off the soldering iron with, a uh, little knife here to cut your Kapton. Uh, the decoder does come with a couple uh, wires here for soldering on your speaker. It does come with the speaker and uh, right here and these different size enclosures to put it in uh, depending on your application. I'm going to be using probably the smallest one I can because of the clearance underneath the shell that needs to fit in there. And it comes with the Capcom, Capcom tape, two LEDs, and the decoder. These have to actually be pried apart and uh, shaken out. So you kind of got to pull them out to the side pretty well. Yeah. There we go. You can see that you have the old DC light board in here um, and an LED. Replicate the size of that LED and all the bend that it has in there. A needle nose pliers for that if I need it. So when I look inside the shell here, you can see that there is a raised area here where the light goes into in the cab. That's basically about how deep it goes to where it touches the, the frame. And the rest of it over on this side is uh, deeper so the speaker can fit down inside that enclosure area. I'm interrupting this installation to give you a warning. Pre-fit your speaker and enclosure into the locomotive and put the shell back on. Otherwise you're going to have to end up milling your frame, like I did in this PA1. Can't say I didn't warn you. This uh, retaining clip, ending back motor tabs. That's that light board, or that LED, up to uh, the new one. I'm going to bend leads. So my diode is bent a little bit like that. It fits into the locomotive a little bit easier. Okay, so get a sharpie so you can mark where the power leads to the engine fold over the top of these uh, uh, strips here because you have to isolate where they are. Okay, so I got a black dot on both sides. Careful not to bend it. The included Capcom tape, Capcom, whatever it's called. Fold it over once. Okay, so you got some insulating tape right over that dot. So I can put this back into the same position that it came out of. But you probably want to trim off some of the excess tape on that folded over edge. There's a little tiny nubby piece right here in a hole that's supposed to press in against to hold it in place. So it can be a little difficult to get it back in where you want it to without bending too much. Once you find the hole, it goes in there pretty pretty snaps in there pretty easily right there. There's a little little uh, nub right there. 
And let's do the same thing for the other side. Okay, time to solder on an LED onto the board. I'm also going to solder two wires onto where the speakers go. Down, snap it, slide it back in because there's a little tiny uh, notch right down here. It should lock it in place. But what we're going to do is we're going to solder these tabs down. So you fold those over. Because just putting the pressure down on it with this retaining clip is not going to be enough to hold it in place. Okay, after you get it soldered in, take that plastic retaining clip and put it back in to hold the board in place. Uh, it, board may be a little bit thicker than the old one, so you're going to have to kind of stick your thumb in there and just push in the center to push down until it snaps in there. Um, otherwise, the board may come loose as you're running it. I took a little isopropyl alcohol and a brush and cleaned off all the extra flux that was on there and now it's time to put on the speaker. So the speaker is going to go in right about here somewhere in this back area here whatever is going to fit and since I've got nothing in there that's blocking it from uh, fitting down inside this back end I can put it anywhere on that spot which is kind of unfortunate that they didn't mark which side's positive which side's negative Maybe it don't matter. I'm going to solder wires onto the speaker before I put it onto the locomotive. Give myself a little bit of flux. A little flux on here. Okay, we're going to do a DCC motor test. Uh, I'm going to go over here and turn my DCC on. And you do see the blue light, which means you're getting power. Turn it off, turn it on. Okay. Uh, programmed to number three, local number three. Let's turn the headlight on. Oh, headlight works. forward and reverse looks good okay now that I have my uh, operational test uh, done and that passed with lights and sound and movement well, not sound but lights and movement uh, time to hook the speaker up now that I've got my uh, glue figured out using some super expert model glue figure out where I want my wires at and where they go this one here is going to go to the S positive side probably have a little bit too long of wire but uh, that's okay it's always a good thing to have it uh, too long than too short already put some uh, solder on there check the connection 
connections. Make sure you don't have cold solder joints. Fold your wires in around uh, the electronics. Let's go check and see if it sounds good. Okay, we got the speaker on. Let's turn track power on. Oh, it automatically comes on. Headlight. Whoops. Headlight. Horn. Obviously, you heard that. Bell. Three is a short horn. Nine is a crossing horn. We have reverse, we have forward, everything seems to be working. Okay, the moment of truth. Putting this cab back on the body. I sure do hope this speaker fits in there. Great, it sits too high. See? It's pushing up on it. So much for not having to mill this. Okay, you see that angled section on the end of this uh, locomotive? I'm going to grind this down so it's about that much ground down so that it's flat using a grinder that I have and uh, hopefully that works because this is going to take a while if, it, if I do it by hand. After grinding more off of the back end of this. As you can see, quite a lot lower. Let's see how this goes on. Well, there we go. Looks like uh, it's down far enough. Well, I'm going to call this one good. The shell is on. I could probably grind just a little bit more off on one side to get this cover to really snap down in place. If there's a problem, I'll take it off and grind it down. I did not glue down the speaker in place because I think just pressing it down in place is going to be just fine for what I'm doing here. Let's go test it out on the layout. Okay, we got the shell back on. It's on my programming track. And I programmed it with uh, some settings you might want to know. The defaults are definitely do not go with a PA, but uh, I changed the locomotive sound to uh, an Alco 244 turbo. I adjusted CV 123 to value number seven. And I changed the air horn CV 120 to uh, CV29, uh, which is a Leslie S5T uh, horn, which is uh, basically what the PA's, at least this PA, was probably already uh, modified to in 1960 when this was uh, painted for uh, what they used it for. So let's go and check out what it sounds like. There we have the idling noise. I also adjusted the volume down, the master volume down to CV uh, value 100, which is on uh, uh, CV 128, I believe. And you get some random noises. That's a lot quieter than the default value of 192. And it's got some pretty good uh, uh, motor control, but it's kind of uh, bouncy. I could probably adjust some of that. And using uh, 128 steps 
on the loco control here. Okay, headlight, turn that on. That's pretty bright. Uh, you should be able to see a whole lot of stuff in front of that engine when you're doing night running on your layout. Uh, pressing, F, pressing F7 turns it into a dimmer. So that's pretty good. It kind of, you know, wobbles around a little bit when it goes dim. Pretty nice effect. Okay, some of the sound effects on here is you have uh, a bell. I left the default bell sound in there. You got a grade crossing signal on F9. F13 is couple uncouple. F17 is fuel loading. F20 is a steam generator. Uh, then you got the sander valve, you got some cab chatter, some all aboard coach doors, and the rest of the functions. Uh, if you have a function three and four output wired up, which this does not, uh, that's where 24 and 25 would be, and the other ones are not used. So that's been my review of the Soundtracks TSU KN1 sound decoder for Kato N scale, EF, and PA units like this one, and a couple others as well. I'd like to thank Soundtracks for donating the sound decoder to me for this install into the PA-1. They didn't have an install video for it, so I volunteered to provide one because I had one. And so, I volunteered. But, because of that, I found out a bunch of things I probably should have done better. Number one, pre-planning. I did not fit the speaker into the enclosure area and put the shell back onto the motor. It didn't fit. It wouldn't go on. Which means I had to mill the frame down a little bit to make room for the speaker. I didn't find this out until after I had done all the install stuff because I was excited about doing this install. I didn't plan ahead. Lesson learned. I will plan ahead next time. Number two thing that I learned was I need to improve my soldering skills. What I would probably do in the future is put a little bit of solder on all the pads where the items are going to get soldered to, like the LED and the speaker wires, with a little bit of solder. Make sure your soldering job go a lot faster. Those are the things I learned. If you want to find out more about uh, Soundtracks decoders, go out to the website. i got a link down in the description. Also, if this is your first time visiting the Bob's N Scale Man Cave, consider subscribing down below. Ring that bell to get notified of future videos. Leave a comment and give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you liked. And as always, Man Cavians, happy model railroading. You stay off those tracks. Bye.